Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Monday night hangout here. Um, I'm Vicki. If you don't know who I am, I am an Emerald Ambassador, and it is my week to host. Yay. Um, and so I have invited a dear friend of mine, Meredith Brocklebank, to come and talk to us about mindset tonight. I met Meredith, um, I want to say, was that 2021, I think, at Jewel School. Um, and we just really connected there. And I think she's great. I love listening to her trainings um, and all the things. And so I thought, hey, who better to ask to come and, and talk to us all? So I won't keep yapping and I will let her get right to it since we are limited on time. Thank you. I'm so excited um, to be with you guys tonight. So first of all, let me say props to you guys for being on, for making this commitment and this investment in yourself. Um, that is one of the best things that you can do. And we're actually going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, I want to start by sharing just a little bit of my story, because I feel like if you're going to have to listen to me um, for 20 minutes or so, that you should know a little bit about who I am. So um, I do live in the Middle Tennessee area. I live a little bit south of Nashville. I came here for college and never left. Um, I have been with Plexus now eight years this month, um, which blows my mind um, because I said I would never do something like this. I was a professional, right? And I wasn't interested in something like that. Um, and I bet you can guess what changed it when I tell you that I have an eight and a half year old and um, my son was born and I was crying myself to sleep at night because I didn't want to leave him. Um, I was crying myself to sleep at night because I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I knew that um, there just had to be more um, than the life that I was living. It wasn't that I hated my job. In fact, I loved my job. I was a high school math teacher um, and I loved teaching. It's actually why I love doing stuff like this is because like I'm a teacher. I trained to be a teacher. I believe God created me um, to be a teacher. And I did really love teaching. I just didn't love working 50, 60 hours a week and struggling to make ends meet and being away from my baby. Um, I knew that we wanted more babies down the road. And it was like, how are we going to do this? if we are already struggling with just this one. And so I tried the pink drink. It felt like the lights came on um, and the Lord shifted my heart posture and opened my mind to what this could be. And so I'm one of those people that I really started with the business in mind from the beginning um, because I couldn't afford it otherwise. Plain and simple. I was a teacher. My husband was in law enforcement. Um, there was no wiggle room. Like there was no, we're going to get Starbucks or we're drinking Cokes or we're going out to eat. Like, there wasn't that. And so the only way for me to like continue feeling as good as I felt on that seven day trial was for me to suck it up and figure out how to make this a business. And I looked at the compensation plan and I was a math teacher and I realized this compensation plan is smart and I can do this and I can do this in the nooks and crannies while um, still teaching. Uh, nine months after I started Plexus, I um, resigned from my teaching job um, and went part time. Two years later, I completely quit um, and was home full time. And almost three years ago, my husband also quit his job. Um, so we are now both home. Um, I'm a Sapphire. He's an Emerald. Um, we have four kids now. So praise the Lord. We're both home because we have four kids now. Um, and we actually ended up deciding to homeschool, which is not what we thought we would be doing either. Um, but we follow the Lord's um, the Lord's calling. And so he called us to Plexus. And I think one of the reasons why he did that was to allow us to homeschool our kids. So um, that's just a little bit about me. Clearly, I'm a believer. I've already mentioned that like four or five times. It's been a huge part of my journey. Um, and there is going to be a little bit of that in what I share tonight. So um, when Vicki reached out to me and she was like, hey, like, what do you want to talk about? I was like, look, these are the things that I typically talk about. Um, and mindset has become like one of my very favorite things to talk about. Um, however, when I first started, I thought it was a bunch of mumbo jumbo and I thought it was stupid. Um, so do me a favor and drop a one in the chat if you've ever thought to yourself, all of this mindset stuff is just stupid and it doesn't matter what I think as long as I do the work because that was what I thought, right? Um, you have probably heard the whole, this business is 80% mindset and 20% skill set. And if you're anything like me, you thought to yourself, well, that's dumb because I can tell myself I'm a squirrel all day long, but that's not going to make me a squirrel, right? Like, why does that even matter? Um, and I'll also admit that um, being a believer, I'm not a big fan of this whole like manifestation, right? Like I'm going to manifest that I want to be a diamond. And so that's good. No, the only person that can 
like make something happen like that is the heavenly father. So I am not going to come here and tell you that you can manifest your way to anything. Um, but what I am going to tell you is that when you are intentional about changing your mindset, when you are intentional about changing your thoughts, it does change the way that you show up. And that is what actually changed the tra changes the trajectory of your business. Um, and there are actually some scriptures that kind of support this idea. Um, I think about Romans 12, where it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? Like that tells me that renewing my mind will transform me. And it also tells me that it is possible to renew my mind right? That this, this is possible. Neuroscience tells me that, but way before neuroscience, scripture was telling me that, right? I think about in second Corinthians where it talks about how we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And here's the deal y'all. If you don't take captive, every thought, every thought will take captive of you. Like it is not, there is no way to just like drift in this scenario. You're not going to drift towards a healthy mindset any more than you drift towards eating healthy or you drift towards a closer relationship with the Lord or your spouse or any, like it takes intentionality. Okay. And so I just want to share with you guys a little bit of what I've learned when it comes to mindset and the intentionality piece of it. Okay. So first of all, um, Thinking through where do I need to attack my mindset? Because here's the tough part. It is different for everyone, right? Um, I, I can't tell you what thoughts you need to choose because those are going to be specifically linked to something that you struggle with. Um, so I actually want to start with a little bit of an activity, okay? Um, I, I'm a teacher. I can't help myself. Um, and honestly, this activity, you probably should spend like 20 minutes doing, but we're not going to do that. I want to give you like two or three minutes. And I want you to pull out a piece of paper, scratch paper, whatever. You're probably going to want to throw it away when you're done anyways. And I want you to write down all of the negative things that you think about yourself. Okay. Like when nobody's paying attention, the things you don't want to say out loud, what are the thoughts that actually come into your mind about yourself, maybe about your business? What do you think when it's time to sit down to work? What do you think when it's time to send that message? And I want you to just like brain dump it for a second. And I'm going to shut up and let you do that for a minute. Okay. Like I said, you probably should spend another, like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes thinking through this, but I wanted you to have a starting place because there's probably some themes that you're sensing as you write down these thoughts, right? Probably a whole lot of not enoughness, right? Um, but there's probably some themes that are coming up for you here. Um, and the reason that I mention that is because when we start talking about mindset, I want you to be targeted, okay? So 
the analogy that just popped into my mind is this idea of like when some, and I hate this analogy because most of us are probably like not huge fans of most Western medicine, but it's what popped in my head. So it's what you're going to get. Like somebody goes to the hospital and they're like, we have no idea what it is. So let's just start them on this wide spectrum antibiotic, right? We don't want to do that. And we don't want to do that in our mind either, right? Like you don't want to just start like picking random thoughts. I want you to be strategic about targeting your specific limiting beliefs. Okay, so let me give you an example of one that's pretty common. And that is this fear of reaching out to people, right? I'm afraid to reach out to people, maybe because I'm afraid of what they're going to think about me, which might kind of boil down to your value and like where your value and your identity comes from, um, that people pleasing nature. I'm afraid of what they're going to say, right? I'm, af I'm afraid of rejection, right? But like, if you're, if you're someone that like, I'm really confident in who I am, then talking about value in your positive affirmations and in your mindset work, isn't going to make a shift, right? But if that's a struggle for you, that's where you need to target. Are you guys kind of following me? Are you picking, are you picking up what I'm putting down, right? Are you like following what, what I'm saying here? So step one, which is going to take some more time for you guys, is to get really um, thoughtful about your thoughts, right? And really reflective of what are the thoughts that I'm thinking in this scenario? Why is this situation challenging for me? Why does this feel stressful for me? And, and ask yourself those questions so that you can identify limiting beliefs. Okay. Um, I identified one on accident at a conference a couple of years ago. Um, you guys are going to laugh at me a little bit here, but I got really stressed out because we were late coming back to the session. And like all of my friends are like, what's the big deal, Meredith? Like we were just having lunch, but I was really like anxious about being late coming back into the session. And so we dug in, like, why do you feel anxious about this? And I realized that I felt anxious about it because I was afraid that like other people were going to judge me for showing up late. Like, what are they going to think that I showed up late? Like, are they going to think that I'm not serious? Are they going to think that I'm not committed? Are they going to blah, 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 blah. And one of my best friends who's on my team um, looked at me and said, and it was all about them liking me, right? I wanted them to like me. And she looked at me and she said, well, Meredith, do you like yourself? And I literally, I'm not even kidding. I went, am I supposed to? Like, I had never thought about that. I had spent my whole life, I was probably 30 years old at this point. I had spent my whole life worrying about, do they like me? Do they like, will they like me if I do this? Will they like me if I do this? I had never stopped to ask myself, like, do I like myself? Well, I'll tell you what, I had a limiting belief around that. And so I was targeted in my approach that like, I do like myself. I think I'm cool. I think I'm fun. Like, and then... I didn't care so much what they thought because I had targeted that specific limiting belief. You guys following me? Okay. So step one is to figure out what are your limiting beliefs and that you need to start out by targeting. Okay. Step two is to go on the offense. Okay. And this is probably what you've heard the most about is offense when it comes to um, mindset. The most common that you've probably heard is this idea of positive affirmations or positive declarations, right? Again, I this is not manifestation. This is changing the thought patterns in your brain. So the way that your brain works, the more that you think a thought, the deeper that groove in your brain becomes and the easier it is to think said thought, okay? So if I'm constantly thinking I'm not good enough, and I think that all day, every day, and I don't do anything to replace that thought, y'all, you're just going to keep thinking it till you die. And nobody wants to do that. And so step one is to write positive affirmations specific to the limiting beliefs that you struggle with. Not just like cheery, like, oh, these make me feel good statements, but like, okay, if I struggle with where my value comes from, right? Right. Maybe, I, I, maybe I'm struggling with this not enoughness. One of my positive affirmations is that my value comes from the heavenly father and he created me to do amazing things. And so when my brain would like to think I'm not good enough, instead I'm saying out loud every single day, y'all, you're saying them every single day, right? My value comes from the heavenly father. 
I am on my way to diamond. That is one of my positive affirmations. I am on my way to diamond. I'm not manifesting that. I just, that's where I'm going. And that's the thought that I want to be thinking because that's where I'm headed. Um, When you think about reaching out to people, this is where accommodating limiting belief comes up with this fear of reaching out to people. Um, God is using me and Plexus to change lives. And so when I get nervous to reach out to someone, Right, I say, God is using me and Plexus to change lives. And that's the thought I'm choosing. And so that's the groove that I'm repeating in my brain to make that thought easier and easier and easier. Okay, so when you go on the offense, positive affirmations. I have girls on my team right now that I have told to set an alarm on their phone three times a day to say their positive affirmations, morning, afternoon, and before they go to bed. Okay, it is that important to say your positive affirmations because like we all like to laugh, this business is 80% mindset and only 20% skill set. Drop a two in the chat if you've ever said, well, I'm doing all the things, <laughs> right? I'm doing all the things, but I'm not getting the results that I want. Guess what? It probably has to do with your mindset. Right. Because if, like if you're sending the messages, but you're sitting them there in this place of like ick and fear right? Like that does not come across the same as if you're sending a message from a place of boldness and confidence and faith and saying, God is using me and Plexus to change lives. So I'm going to go send some messages, right? Like it just feels different than I have to go send my messages today. So positive affirmations three times a day. And it is important to say them out loud. And here's why. When you just say them in your brain, your brain thinks them, but you don't actually hear them. And when you say them out loud, you're actually hearing it too. So Say them out loud. Okay. The other piece of going on the offense is consistently filling your brain with positive things that other people say. Okay. So I drew a line in the sand a few years ago that I was going to do professional development every single day. I'm going to be honest. I skipped that a lot because I just figured I need to do the things. I just got to send the messages. I just got to post. I just got to do, right? Like I just have to do all the things. Y'all, it's not about doing the things. It's about becoming the version of yourself that you need to be. Right. I've told so many people recently that the Lord has been refining me in the last year. And it's been a hard year for us just personally. Like that's a whole other story. Like I have PTSD, like it's been a whole thing, but the Lord has been refining me into the version of myself that I need to be, to be the kind of diamond leader that I want to be. So when I say I'm going to diamond, like, I'm like, that's where I'm headed. And God is refining me to be that version of myself. Can you hear even positive affirmations in that? Right. Like just the way that you talk to yourself. Um, And so part of that refinement has been professional growth, right? What am I reading? What am I listening to? What am I watching, right? What what goes in must come out. And here, let me give you permission. It is not about remembering everything that you listen to, right? You go on a walk and you listen to a podcast or you're folding laundry or doing dishes and you're listening to a podcast and you might think, well, I can't take notes and I'm not going to remember it. Who cares? That's not what it's about. It's about filling your brain with all of that positive, good stuff, okay? So that's going on the offensive when it comes to our mindset. But there's a defensive component to this too, okay? Um, And I think this one often gets forgotten about, right? You hear people talk about positive affirmations and you hear people talk about like, well, you got to listen to good stuff. You also have to stop the junk, right? So when your brain pops up and says, I'm not enough, You stop that right in its tracks and you say, no, like God created me to do powerful things. And my value comes from him. My value doesn't come from my, from anything that in the back office. Right. And so you stop that thought and you replace it with a new thought. Right. Oh, I don't want to send messages today. Nope. God is using me and Plexus to change lives. Oh, I don't like what I see. Nope. I am on my way to diamond. I am a strong and confident leader, right? Like when you think those thoughts, you stop them and you replace them with the positive affirmations that you've specifically written to combat that specific thought, right? We're targeting specific limiting beliefs. So you'll recognize that limiting belief and then you can say the positive affirmation that fights that specific one. You guys following me? Um, More than just thoughts, you align your actions with those positive affirmations. Okay, this one might seem a little backwards, but one of the things that I have struggled with as an Enneagram three, 
Any Enneagram lovers in this group? Um, I love the Enneagram. I'm an Enneagram three. Enneagram threes are the achievers. We like to achieve all the things. We want to be the best at everything all the time. So you can imagine how I feel about the fact that I am not yet diamond. Just so awesome. Truly, it's hard when you're an achiever and you're not achieving. You're not in an achieving season. You're in a refining season. Okay, so that being said, one of the things that I've had to struggle with is placing my value in my success right? I'm happy and I'm valuable because I swept the contest or I like what I see. My points are up. So everything's great. And when my points are down, everything's terrible. Or I had a good day because I got so much stuff done. Has anybody else ever said that? Am I the only one, right? Like at the end of the day and you're like, how was your day, honey? And I'm like, oh, I had a great day. I got this, 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 this done. Well, what I realized was that that thought was actually feeding a limiting belief. It was feeding the belief that my value came from my success, that my value came from my productivity, not that my value came from the heavenly father. So when I caught myself saying that, whoop, I stopped myself, right? And I said, you know what? I had a great day. And then I think about what are the things that I did today? Where was I the hands and feet of Jesus today? Right? <laughs> Instead of like, how many things did I check off my to-do list? And I align my actions with that new affirmation. So if when I get to the end of my work time or um, I'm working and I have a child that needs something, right? Can, can I pause and give them my undivided attention for 30 seconds and then go back to working? Yeah, I can. And that aligns with the, with the version of myself that I want to be. And it aligns with the affirmation that my value does not come from the back office. My value does not come from sweeping a contest. My value does not come from success, right? My value comes from my heavenly father and the lives that I'm changing. And part of the lives that I'm changing is through the back office, right? It is through what we're doing. And that is incredible. And I love that, but it's easy to get lost in it as well. And so that has been one of the ways that I have been intentional about stopping that negative thought and replacing it. Um, Again, when it comes to magic messaging, right? How do I go on the defensive for that? Well, it's time for me to message for whatever reason I don't feel like messaging, right? I have that limiting belief popping back into my head. I stop it. I replace it with my new belief that I'm choosing intentionally, right? Taking captive these thoughts. And so I replace it with God is using me and Plexus to change lives. And then I align the action with that belief. I go and send the messages. Do you see how like, first we identify the limiting belief, then we write the affirmations to target those specific limiting beliefs. That's going on offensive. And then when those limiting beliefs pop up, we go on the defensive. We stop them and we align our actions with the beliefs that we're choosing. All right, so it's kind of this two-pronged approach to changing your mindset. Now, the good news is, Scripture, science, experience tells us that this is possible, right? This is absolutely possible. I can show up as a much more confident version of myself because of the work that I have done in my mind. The bad news is that it takes time. One of my all-time favorite phrases, Sarah Marble said this at my very first convention, and I quote it to my team all day long, small steps repeated consistently over time produce massive results. Drop a three in the chat if you have heard that before. Usually when we hear that phrase, we're thinking about the work, right? If I can do my small steps of IPA every single day, it will produce massive results and it will, okay? But when it comes to mindset, the same is true. It's small steps repeated every single day. It's saying my positive affirmations. Well, that doesn't take long. That's not a huge thing to do, right? That's a small step repeated consistently, right? It's stopping those negative thoughts in their tracks, it's listening to professional development or reading professional development. And it's aligning your actions with those new beliefs. Those are small steps that you repeat consistently. Now, remember how I described the brain and how the thought, the more the thought goes, the deeper the groove goes? Y'all, <laughs> some of us have got some Grand Canyon thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Like we've been thinking these things literally our whole lives right? Society, or maybe your family of origin, or maybe some person said something to you when you were a child and you just chose to believe the lie 
that you weren't good enough for whatever reason and you've believed this lie and your brain has thought this lie over and over and over again for 30, 40, 50 years. Okay, if I came to you and I had been unhealthy physically for 40 years and I was like, well, I'm gonna drink this pink drink for a week and then I'll tell you what I think about it. Y'all would be so annoyed with me you would be so irritated because you know that it doesn't work that way, right? Like I'm not going to drop a hundred pounds in my first month on flexus. That's not how it works. The same is true for our minds. You have to show up consistently and choose, take captive every thought to renew your mind consistently. And here's the cool part. As you do that, you're going to discover new limiting beliefs you didn't know you had right? You're going to, you're going to like, Oh, I took care of that one. Like I feel better about that one. And I, I'm, I'm really good on that one. And I've gotten better about that one. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't like myself. I didn't even know that was a thing, right? I had already been doing this whole mindset thing for like at least a year or two at this point. And my friend looks at me and says, do you like yourself? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Right? A whole new, un like limiting belief just opened up for me that I was then able to target with specific affirmations right? One of my affirmations is that I am fun. I didn't think of myself as a fun person, right? I thought I was type A and I was valedictorian and I was smart, but I did not think of myself as fun. Well, now that I think of myself as fun, when we go to like convention and I'm like dancing on the dance floor with my team, I'm able to show up in a different way because I've changed my thoughts, right? It didn't happen overnight, but the more that you change your thoughts, the more layers you get to unravel, and the more confident you get to become. And I hate to admit that they were right, but it's true that 80% of this business is mindset and only 20% is skill set. When you show up from a posture of confidence and big belief, you're going to take big, bold actions. And when you take big, bold actions, you get big, bold results. But it all starts with that belief in yourself. And, and being intentional about the thoughts that you think. You have to spend more time thinking about your thinking. And that's that's how those small steps add up to get you where you want to go. So mindset, it matters, friends. It matters. How good was that? Thank you. Oh my gosh. I totally needed that. <laughs> we all do. That's the thing. We all do. It's all the time, all the time. I think it's just a constant thing that we have to work on all the time. So thank you so much awesome. um, for those wise words. Thank Love you for that. having me. This was fun. I get to be a teacher again, so I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can come back anytime and we always do a giveaway at the end. Um, so everyone just kind of put maybe your top takeaway in the comments and then we'll pick a number from all the comments. Um, Lisa, do you want to pick the number? You want me to pick the number? Or... All right. You can so. pick a number. All right. Cool. Yeah. We Lisa. have um, 45 on, so about 39 people that are eligible. Um, I'm going to go with, well, people are still typing, so I don't want to say my number yet. <laughs> <laughs> they want to make it fair. I want everybody to get to say what they want to say. I love if it. Lands, if it lands on one of the hosts, then we'll pick up. We'll, right. well, I'm going to pick number 13. So however you figure that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, Colleen and Tilla. That, that's it, right? Colleen? Colleen. That's it, right? Amanda, Attila. I see Amanda. Where's Colleen? Where's yeah. Where's oh, I'm here. Oh, okay, there she is. Your sidekick. Okay. Yeah. So um message vicky or your host your whoever's yeah whoever yeah <laughs> you yeah. message me <laughs> oh okay is she your girl I'll message you. She, what you no she's not my person no but okay. i guess just message me right and then yeah. i'll take care of it yeah yeah that's yeah. fine that's fine okay thank awesome. you Mary. it was so good You're welcome I'll you, I'll thanks for having me guys as soon as it, it uploads all right awesome thank all you right. see y'all next have week have a good night y'all okay right, bye, bye.